Hello everybody. It occurred to me that today's uh, topic and subject of the video is all about pots. Um, so it'll probably be titled something like that. I'm going to pot on some tomatoes in a minute very quickly. I'm only going to do one and then I'm going to pot on something else and just show you how I do that. Then we'll go down to the allotment and I'm going to be putting my dahlias in some pots and show you where, why I'm doing it and what I'm doing. And then at the very end of the video, I'm doing something a little bit different with uh, a few extra seed potatoes that I've got all in pots. So let's get on with it. <laughs> Now, before we go any further, I mentioned on Tony's Live about Mer's Tail, and this is it in my greenhouse here. You can just about see it. It's a little awkward with the camera to see. Hopefully you can see the stem there and see them coming through. And all I do is get my fingers and thumb as close to the base of it as I can and gently pull, and you'll hear it snap off. And you pull out a good amount of root. This weakens the plant. And this will come down to like this and eventually that will spread out and become those two pieces would fill the complete frame of what you could see there. Um, so this is the problem I've got up at home. But as I say, uh, the old adage that I use with this is to never let it see a Sunday. So I just every now and again, just get down on my hands and knees and pull these out. And as I say, you can see you get a decent amount of root. If you get right down at the bottom at the base of the plant, at the stem and pull, then you'll just weaken it. It was a lot worse when I moved in. But I am very slowly getting on top of it. Well, this has taken a good few years to do so I'll get rid of this now probably burn it so on the heated propagator bench I've got all my squashes pumpkins courgettes sweet corn all the sort of warmer weather plants and my melons they're all on there and I was able to get them going because I've moved most of the tomatoes to over here this is another heat mat the difference between the two is this propagating bench has been set at around 24 25 degrees all year so far so plants grow very well in there as you can see from what's growing in there at present this heat mat is set at about 16 degrees and there's a good reason for that in that i want to harden off the tomatoes coming off the heat there going onto less heat there so that when they go into the polytunnel in a week, 10 days time or so, the temperature has dropped for the plants. They're more used to it. They're never going to go outside, so I don't need to harden them off fully. You can see the stems on these are really quite sappy and they'll stay that way. And that's why you tie them into some sort of a support when you're growing them in a polytunnel. But the end result of that is because they're growing so well on the heat here and growing on here, they're growing in these pots and they've only been in this pot for probably getting on for 10 days that's not a good one to show you <laughs> they're actually growing out of these pots very very quickly so I need to pot them on and that's what I'm about to do and explain why I'm why I'm potting them on so I have my pot ready here and the tomato plant that I want to put in it and you can see the difference in size if I put them in and there's it's essentially about half an inch difference in between the different pot sizes and you want this you don't want to put it into too big a pot because simply when you water it the plant could drown there'd be too much moisture in there and you also want new feed going in so just going to sprinkle probably no more than half an inch in the bottom of that pot and then take this plant out. This is a Jersey Devil. And you can see they've only been in there for about a week, 10 days. They're growing so rapidly at the minute. So although, even though I'm reducing the temperature on the plants, these are still growing really well because they've had that good start. And I say in about a week, 10 days time, they will go down to the allotments. 
they'll acclimatise down there and then a week or so later I will probably start planting them. We'll see. It, I mean that's weather dependent and how the plants are looking and doing what the con climactic conditions are. But that's now got a fresh lease of life and within 10 days that pot will be full of roots. But if I left them in that pot then it would be pot bound by the time I came to pot it on. So that's the important reason. This is why you've got to keep your tomato plants moving. You've done everything you can for them for the last couple of months. Got a reasonable plant, so I look after it. Now, I was short, actually short of pots, but what this allows me to do now is I've got this tray of peppers here. These are in much smaller pots. And again, you can see that that, that fits in there with just about half an inch or so around it. So I can now pot these peppers on with the same reason, the same ethos in there, is to keep the plants moving into fresh compost. See, so look at the roots on that, that's really quite good. And again, in these are a little bit slower growing than tomatoes. In two weeks time, this pot will be full and I might need to move it up to the bigger pot. That's normally what I'll have to do. These will stay up here on the very hot potting bench for a good time yet, probably until the end of May. But that's now got fresh compost to go into. Watering becomes easier because it can hold more water. It's got more feed and a bigger area to grow off into in comparison to that. So there's the ethos of those pots and why I do it and why it's important. To so say it's no point going from come here, going from one of them to one of them. The plant will just suffer in there because there'd be far too much water. But jumping to that, this second pot size is far more beneficial. So there we go. So I hope that gives you a better understanding of why we pot on plants and why we need to. You want to catch them just at that right moment where the, fill in, the roots are filling the pot, but they're not spiraling round, they're not becoming pot bound. And you don't want to do that too early because you don't want to be putting them into too much compost where they could drown equally the same. You don't want to be putting them into too big a pot for that very same reason. So this is why it's important. You've encouraged the plants to get going, you've given them the vigour and we all know tomatoes have got an incredible vigour but you don't want to be stop starting their life. You want that vigour to continue on so the rest of those plants will be potted on this afternoon when I get home and they'll be ready to come down the polytool in a week's 10 days time, something like that. But anyway, I'll just spin you around and show you this bed. Right, down here at the back of the plot, we've got these two beds left. You can see the edgings are here. Nothing really going on with them at the minute. There's a few perennial weeds to dig out, then I'll dig that over, edge these beds. And these will be my dahlia beds for this year. Not exactly what I want. What I want is deeper beds like these over here that are filled ready to go so that I can plant my dahlias and then mulch on top and leave them in over winter. But this soil down here is far too wet as it is for me to do that in a moment. So I'll have to wait until I can resource some more timber. Timber's far too expensive to buy at the present. So everything I use is recycled. So that's what these are. And I've got dahlias that I've started off ready, ready to go in these beds. And we'll just walk into this little tunnel. So these are all my dahlias down here. First of all, look at all these plants. Isn't that wonderful? Cool. Does that get you excited? Gets me excited. <laughs> anyway, so these are the dahlias. They're all in tubs and they're all in various sized tubs because you want the tub to match the size of the dahlia root that you're potting into. Even the way, all the way down here, these, these are big ones on the end. I've had these tubers the longest and they grow year on year and get bigger and bigger. But you, again, you don't want them, the tubers in too much 
compost you don't want them over wet because they'll be liable to rot see there's actually one starting into growth there but they'll all eventually go out down there some will go home and some will get put in other parts of the plot but i have a few more to pot up and we'll go and do that now so i'm wanting there's a few more dahlias to pot up that for one reason or another we're in the kitchen at home <laughs> uh, a couple from wilco's a couple i can't remember where they came from i think there's seven in there seven cactus mixed so going there. i'm only going to do the one this was one that came from another supermarket beginning with M. Not those Waitrose people. <laughs> um. <laughs> so, here's my tuba. Now you can probably see this veining on them is where they've been dehydrated in the packaging. And you can see at the top, there's the stalk. And what you really want to do is pick your pot, pot size carefully. This is an ideal pot size because it just fits in there. There's no point in me putting that in a pot like that. It's far too oversized. And there'll be too much water around it. And there's every chance it's going to rot. And one more thing which I've noticed just before I started filming that you need to look for is that. I don't know if you can see it in there. So what I'll do is I'll tap it out a slug in there that would be the death knell of that so i shall deal with that in a minute but all we want to do is just crumble some compost in pop this in into the compost with the stem upwards and then just barely cover it ideally when this is settled down you should be able to see the stalk at the top and I can see that just needs a little bit more and once that's watered down and into the pot that will settle around the roots and the stem will be just about visible or just near the surface and then I'll just pop that with the others in the small tunnel to have that ready for, for um, to grow when it's ready to come up so I've got all those others today I've also got some calla lilies to do as well I want to do them on on the uh, on film but they're much the same just pop them into pots or at this time of year you could actually put them straight out into your beds which i've done before nice sunny position for them so there we go there's dahlias covered and done <laughs> now you've got to have a bit of fun when you're gardening or when you're left alone to your own devices have a bit of fun with what you're doing and i'm planting some pink fir apples in this bucket i've already done two and i'm about to do a third i've got a couple of big handfuls of compost in there now usually when i'm putting my potatoes in my pots i normally sort of do half to one handful of blood fish and bone per pot and i do that twice in the different layers this time i'm putting two in there i'm gonna give that a mix up and that will become apparent presently so some pink fair apple potatoes and I'll just put two in in the pot like so nothing different there it's all usual stuff many of you will have seen this hundreds of times before from various people doing it I'll just get this filled up And I'll put another couple of handfuls. They are small handfuls, admittedly, but nonetheless, it's twice the amount I would normally put in the pot. And then I'll just fill it up. Now, what I'm doing is something that I saw probably a dozen of years or so ago on an internet forum. I've always wanted to do it and haven't as yet but I am this year and that is growing a potato tower <laughs> I've got some old buckets here I've cut the base out 
as these pink fair apples grow and grow up you normally earth potatoes up so this bottomless bucket goes on top when the foliage is of a decent size and I'll start earthing up in this bucket with a bit more feed again not quite as much as in the bottom bucket but more feed nonetheless and then another one will go on top so eventually you'll have something like this and the idea is when you take these hoop buckets off eventually you've got potatoes all the way down the stem and so you've increased your yield so I'm going to do three this year and see how we get on as I say just a little bit of fun <laughs> something a bit different so all you people out there that I know there's a um, I think it's Digwell Green Figures Steve over there is a doing the single seed challenge there's a little tip for someone put an extra bucket on top <laughs> but you better check with Steve first in case he's breaking the rules <laughs> bit of fun so I said today it was about pots didn't I we had the pots of the greenhouse at home pots for the daily so that's pots and pots and then we've got the pots for the potatoes the pots with the pots with pots on top <laughs> so we've got pots and pots and pots with pots and pots <laughs> but that's it everyone look after yourselves stay safe i'll see you all very very soon <laughs>